friend from the military used to say that people suck until we get to know them. <laughs> and we laugh because on some level, we recognize the truth in those words. Hidden in our laughter is the root of our problem. What does it mean to know someone? How do we go from a disconnected world filled with fear and isolation to one that's filled with joy and a true sense of belonging? Technology allows us to have hundreds of friends on social media, and that does seem like the answer until we face crisis. But it's in those times of crisis that we realize that real connection is what matters. Genuine, deep, intense connection is essential not only for our survival, but our capacity to create vital lives that are worth living. To connect with our vitality, we must expose ourselves to the core. Imagine that you're in one of the worst places on earth. In that place, you'll know fear. You'll constantly be looking over your shoulder because there are groups actively trying to kill you. You'll experience mind-twisting stress and feel loss so deep and overwhelming that something inside of you snaps. In that place, roughly a quarter of your teammates will be killed by an enemy that you cannot see. What keeps you going and what keeps you safe is the person next to you. For months, you're almost never more than an arm's length away from your teammates. In that proximity and pressure, you form bonds so deep and powerful that you consciously choose to risk your lives for each other. This was Fallujah, Iraq in 2006, where I deployed as a member of the Navy's bomb squad. I came home from that deployment and found myself back in San Diego, California. The San Diego area is home to numerous military installations and tens of thousands of troops. To celebrate my return, some friends invited me to dinner, and of course, they wanted to know how things went in Fallujah. A woman I didn't know asked, Fallujah? I clarified that I had been deployed to Iraq, to which she responded, Iraq, are, are we still there? Not only were we still there, but casualties were spiking. And the US would soon deploy thousands more troops and extend deployments to a year and a half. What I couldn't understand was what we did she feel? At the end of the dinner when she said, thank you for your service, not having asked what that service cost, why was she thanking me? Real connection is more than exchanging pleasantries. It's more than accepting friend requests or tapping like on social media. Real connection is knowing someone so intimately that you see the good, the bad, the bizarre, the ugly. Real connection is letting your someone see and know the same things about you. I remember being outside of Fallujah and watching my friend get blown apart by a roadside bomb. I remember how our security Marines took special care of what was left of him so that my team leader and I wouldn't need to put our friend in a body bag. I remember the gentle way in which these battle-hardened men gave my team leader and I space and silence as we laid our friend on the ground outside of mortuary affairs. They were so connected to our pain, they knew without words that we wanted some semblance of privacy to say goodbye. There is a special power that comes when you connect with someone at such a deep level the willingness to connect in such raw and intense ways is what has bonded one person to another throughout countless calamities. 
The pain of losing my friend was so intense that while I tried to compartmentalize it, to stay focused on the ever increasing danger, some part of me desperately needed someone from home to understand. I wrote a trusted friend about what I was facing and my fears that I too would come home in a bag. (laughs) What I repeatedly received in return were emails about how great the weather was. At first I thought, she must not understand. So I used more and more direct language until finally asking outright why she wasn't acknowledging my pain and fear. And after such direct confrontation, well, the weather was still great in San Diego. What's strange is that a deep sense of connection is not reserved only for those we know and like. In contrast to the experience I had with my friend, I sensed a greater connection with the enemy in Iraq, someone I never even met, someone who not only tried to kill me, but did kill my friends. The enemy and I understood what life and death were all about. And people back home just couldn't or wouldn't understand. Why create raw and intense connection? In that space, we express humanity's greatest evolutionary gift, the ability to share in what another person is feeling, and that can save lives. Last year, I went back to San Diego to visit one of my best friends from the military, and the trip was great. But I had been keeping a secret from my friend for years. I had been too ashamed to share with him that for years, I had been close to killing myself. I shared this with him, and he didn't shy away. He dug in hard. He organized help and rallied a group of friends who flew across the country to support me. My vulnerability and our ability to share in the pain that I was feeling are the reasons that I'm still here. As a performance coach, I work with executives who pride themselves on their ability to be self-sufficient and wall themselves off. Yet every single one of them has experienced tremendous benefits in their health, career success, family life, when they open up. By leaning into connection, they achieve the power to overcome their greatest challenges. The next time you see someone in uniform, don't just thank them for their service. Ask them about their fears. Ask them what it's like to be deployed over and over until their children do not recognize them. Ask them what it's like to have every instinct that was so right in combat be so wrong at home. Be curious and open. Don't shy away because you don't know what to say. In your relationships, don't accept busy or all good when you ask someone how they are. Really dig to tap into how that person is feeling. Learn to express humanity's greatest evolutionary gift with your someone. Feel the power of their emotion and feel what it registers inside you. Then expose your true self, share your hopes and fears and let them feel the same thing. Create genuine, deep, intense connection and experience the vital life that's worth living.